This video is powered by BetUS, and welcome back to Mock the Mock, the first Mock the Mock for the 2025 NFL Draft. If you're unfamiliar with what Mock the Mock is, it's where I take a look at someone else's mock draft, and I mock it, giving you my views, thoughts, and opinions, and we got a good one for you today. We're going to be taking a look at Field Yates' first mock draft of the season. It's fairly early, so don't take the draft order to heart. We're going to be talking about really just the different possibilities that can happen, as well as, you know, highlight these prospects, because that's honestly more important at this stage. So let's go ahead, get into this sucker with pick one. Draft order is determined by ESPN's football power index. Let's go. Oh, and we got a trade at pick one, so I guess it doesn't really matter. The Patriots are trading out. The Giants are trading up for a quarterback. It, if you're familiar with my content, you know I don't love this quarterback class just yet. Don't think there's a top 10 guy in it just yet. Again, a whole season can change a lot of that. We'll see. So Giants kind of paying a hefty price to come up to one here. Uh, I wonder who Field Yates has as one as it's Carson Beck, which he kind of feels like the safe option at this juncture, the, the, the safe option at this point. Uh, just someone who is very, very good, very composed, to be fair, not pressured a ton. But when pressured, didn't look exactly great, but those times are few and far in between. He's got an adequate enough arm uh, for, a, I guess you would say, a top overall pick. And honestly, should should look good this season. Should look good and probably push himself into that top 10 uh, threshold for me. But I will say this class is definitely feeling more like a defensive class, not to say the offensive talent is terrible or we won't see an offensive player off the board till pick 15 like we did in the 2024 class. But because you got a couple of tackles, you got a couple of wide receivers that I think are worthy uh, for that spot. And I mean, quarterback always gets pushed up the board. It's uh, it, it gets overinflated just because of how valuable the position is. You want to take those shots at it. But uh, Giants, they go get their guy because obviously Daniel Jones isn't that guy. Pick two, the Carolina Panthers take James Pierce Jr. Uh, I I personally like Nick Skirton. Uh, I think he's going to kind of emerge as a real contender for top edge in this class. I mean, to be fair, it's a kind of, it's kind of 1A, 1B. They're both very different type of pass rushers as James Pierce. A little undersized, but because of that stupid explosive pass rush win rate was really good. Last season, let's actually pull it up, so I'm not just blowing smoke up my butt. He had a 21.8% pass rush win rate, a true pass rush win rate, which essentially it it takes out pass and plays influenced by the run game, like play actions, RPOs, gives you the truest sense of are these players winning one-on-ones, 31.9%. So yeah, hella good. Panthers would love that. Uh, DJ Warren, I believe, is starting the year on the pup as well. Denver Broncos take Kelvin Banks. Uh, it, it does sound like that. Well, for one, the Broncos do need to get cheaper. So, Garrett Bowles probably gone after the season. Never say never, but does seem like it could be a likelihood. So, them going with a new left tackle makes sense. You got... Uh, Mike McGlinchey, he's up there in dog ears as well. So go on tackle. Makes sense. You want to protect your franchise quarterback in Bo Nix. Kelvin Banks is actually my top tackle. Uh, though, again, it's kind of that 1A, 1B. Will Campbell's still really, really good. Tennessee Titans are coming in at four. They take Shadur Sanders. Okay. I don't think you give up on Will Levis. This is essentially going to kind of be like a rookie year for him. Uh, I know last year he played quite a bit, but you have him now under uh, a new head coaching staff in Brian Callahan. But it's also important to note that, well, for one, Will Levis wasn't a first round quarterback. So there isn't exactly that much tying you to him financially on top of, well, this not being the coaching staff that drafted Will Levis. But I don't think they're going to be out on Will Levis like that. Uh, Shadur is a really good prospect. He doesn't have like the greatest arm strength but it's fine enough for a first for first round consideration 
where he makes up the lack of big arm strength is just how pinpoint he is with the football, the touch he throws with, uh, his just ability to be able to place it and thread it. I would like to see him uh, not induce so much pressure. I get it last year is like offensive line was straight balls. So there was probably some trust issues there with the offensive line that led him to vacate in pockets that were presumably, presumably clean. But, I mean, still, you, you want to see a little bit better pocket poise. I think he, uh, I think 22.5% of the pressures allowed last season were on Shadur. So, it is something you want to see him get better at. But, again, some of that's probably out of his control. But, there, we already got two quarterbacks off board. Kind of nuts. At pick five, the commanders go with Mikel Williams out of Georgia. Guy with all the tools just needs the production. I like this pick. It's fine. I get it. You're shooting on a guy with upside, or you're shooting for a guy with upside. Uh, I mean, the dude had like an 8% pass rush win rate last season, so it's like you definitely need to see the consistency first and foremost. Probably, we're, well, we're going to get a good look at it this weekend against Clemson. Clemson, pretty solid offensive line there, so... Let's see what he can do. New England Patriots. So this is where they trade back to. They go with Will Johnson. I know a lot of Patriots fans got mad that, oh, they didn't go tackle. They need to go tackle. Listen, guys, they just trade. They, they trade or they didn't trade up, but they they grabbed Caden Wallace in the third. Even if he ends up not being the left tackle of the future, you got um, Michael Awenu playing Right tackle, you can make some plays in free agency to get a left tackle. Uh, I'm not saying it's not on the board. It certainly is. You take that in consideration, but you also want to stay true to the value on your board. Though I'd argue Will Johnson and Will Campbell be very, very close on the board and be a bit of a coin flip. But I think Will Johnson's the best player in this draft. And you have Jonathan Jones, going to be a free agent after this season. So it, it makes sense to go after another corner. You could also make a case for edge. Also, it could be tackle could be a position they dip in later in the draft. So again, don't take it too much to heart that oh they didn't go with position I want. All right, Minnesota Vikings go with Graham uh, Mason Graham, who I would say is the second best player in this class. So I like that pick for the Vikings. Keep adding to the defensive line. Uh, this is a team that had a historic blitz rate, blitzed on like 60% uh, of their plays last season. And a lot of that was just the inability of the uh, the defensive line to get pressure by itself. Mason Graham would help that, help alleviate that so you don't have to be, well, bringing in the house on over 50% of your plays. So I like that. It's good value. Raiders, they go with Quinn Ewers at pick eight. So we see three quarterbacks in the top 10. I'm not there yet. I'm just saying that like parts of this class remind me of 2022. Like, and when I went in 2022, I forced a lot of quarterbacks in the first round. I didn't like it. I mean, by the end of the process, I think I had two or three quarterbacks go in the first round. Uh, ended up only being one. I'm not saying this class will end up like the 2022 class, but as of right now, it leaves me a little queasy. I'm not going to argue that the Raiders don't need a quarterback. Adrian O'Connell, I think, could be a high-end backup. Gardner Menchu won the job, like I said he would, uh, but he's not a long-term answer. So, yes, you want to look for quarterback. Uh, Quinn Ewers, he's got the arm talent. You just want to see consistency, especially on the down downfield throws, and he should be able to do that. For back-to-back -back years, he has had a very talented Texas team, so it's now time to see that type of consistency. But before we get into pick nine, got to give a shout-out to BetUS. Got to give a special thanks today's sponsor, BetUS. If you use the link in the description or the pinned comment, then you can take advantage of an insane 125% sign-in bonus on your first three deposits up to two thousand dollars and there is this prop that i like for the nfl because it's near and dear to my heart 
I'm a Dolphins fan. Fins up, baby. Fins up. And they currently have it the over and under for receiving yards for Jalen Waddle at a thousand. He's cleared that total every year of his career. He just got paid. He's a guy whose yards per route ran have gone up each and every year, which means the opportunity is there. I feel like it's a very safe number at a thousand, and I'm very comfortable with going with the over with that. But hey, you too can make this bet or take advantage again of that insane offer that BetUS has provided for you by using the link in the description or the pinned comment. But please, as always, bet responsibly, bet within your means. At pick nine, the Arizona Cardinals go with Nick Skirton out of Texas A&M. I love the dude's size. I really do. And I think he, he is pretty, pretty darn explosive at that uh, 6'4", 285 pounds. The Cardinals, they're in a weird spot when it comes to the edge. Well, for one, the defense does need a little bit more, uh, let's call it talent. But currently, like a lot of their edges are on IR. Darius Robinson, uh, BJ Ojolari. Currently, their starting edges will be Gardeck and Zaven Collins, who Collins more of a tweener. In that regard, though, has kind of formed into more of an edge rusher. Uh, I know they've seen good things from Xavier, uh, Xavier Thomas in the preseason, but still, it, it is a position of need. Pick 10, New Orleans Saints go with Will Campbell. I actually like this one quite a bit. Uh, you got Ryan Ramchak. You don't know what the future looks for him. Uh, it, it just seems like, unfortunately, his career will be cut short because of the uh, degenerate knee. And you got Tal Talisa Fuaga, who natural position is right tackle. So you could kick him back to right tackle, put no, uh, Will Campbell at left. And keep in mind, Trevor Penny, prob good chance that this team's already out on him. Let's actually take a quick gander at the projected starters because cuts did just happen uh, the other day. Let's look at the projected starters for the New Orleans Saints and the offensive line. As currently, they got Fuanga at left tackle, Pennant at right tackle. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that all goes down. Pick eleven is the Seattle Seahawks. They go with Travis Hunter. I like this. Whether he's a wide receiver or a corner, that sounds hella fun to me. I like him best at. Corner, but it makes sense if he wants to stick a wide receiver just because well of how much money the position currently makes in comparison to your top uh corner in the nfl you look at the cornerback room they did they did trade i believe michael jackson a few weeks ago so they're gonna have trey brown out there who i like trey brown but you could be looking for maybe a little more a little more zest uh reek wollen had his struggles in his sophomore year so Hunter Wood makes sense. He'd be a good fit for Mike McDonald's scheme. But also a wide receiver, uh, Tyler Lockett. He's up there in years. They're probably looking to move on from that contract as well. So you, you could bring Hunter into camp and then kind of figure out the best course of action. Tampa Bay Buccaneers go with Benjamin Morrison. They did trade Carlton Davis. Uh, Jameel Dean, stay healthy, but one of my favorite corners in the league is just health of him just staying on the field and being healthy has been a thing the last few years uh they got zion mccullen but last season was a bit up and down his first full year as kind of the starter a lot of that was because of injury so we'll see how he does so corner makes sense it's a very good corner class at least there's three very good must take corners i think early in this draft and morrison is definitely one of them Pittsburgh Steelers at 13, drafting early here. Uh, they go Tetero McMillan. Can you imagine just the sheer amount of size and pluckiness from the wide receiver position with McMillan and Pickens out there? But yeah, you love that. Steelers are a team that does, does need a quarterback desperately. Uh, I mean, Fields, Wilson, they're on one-year deals. They're gone after this season. Uh, they should start fields. They should start fields. So if he ends up not being the start, why not see what you got in fields? If you got them for the year, just go ahead, send it. If it goes poorly, you're going to be picking in the top 
half of the draft, and maybe you can make a move there. But I like Tetsuro McMillan, man. Big fan. Indianapolis Colts go with Malachi Starks. Uh, this is a team I don't feel like will go safety. Uh, even though Starks, I love Starks, my cup of tea when it comes to the safety position. Playmaker comes downhill, plays like a linebacker in some cases. Uh, they, 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 you will see. Hopefully, I think it's gonna be uh, Nick Cross as the starter. But you got Ronnie Thomas there, who lost the starting job late last season. So th there, there's a good chance that, I mean, he could even come off the bench. Uh, Julian Blackman, I believe, is on a one-year deal. So may, taking a swing at the safety position, I think, makes sense. And we got the Jaguars going with Denzel Burks. Like, Burks is a perfect fit for the current scheme in place here for the Jaguars with Nielsen. You're, you're going to be playing a lot of press, a lot of man. That's right up Burks' alley. So the fit makes sense. Burke uh, could be high for him. I don't know. We'll see in a season. Like he, I think he. This is well within his range. Pick sixteen. Cleveland Browns. Emery Jones. I I like this. You got uh, you got Jedrick Wills. They're. I mean, the, the guy can't stay healthy. Uh, and his play has been okay at best. Jack Conklin. He's coming off the big injury, but. You feel like you got his heir apparent in Dewan Jones. So, I mean, going going ahead and just sharing the tackle position for the future, I think, goes a long way. This allows you to get cheaper by not having to pay Wills or uh, or bring back Conklin, get, get off his deal. So, it, it makes all the sense in the world to me. But, hey, if you want to know more about these draft prospects, I released my draft guy a few weeks ago that updates throughout the season. Everybody loves the NFL draft and I know you want to be familiar with every potential prospect that your team may draft. So I got good news for you. My draft guide is available for purchase. It is good throughout the entire draft cycle and it updates through the season regularly. You'll get my current evals and rankings on hundreds of different players with player backgrounds and analytics. It also contains combine and pro day numbers, as well as my notes from the senior and shrine bowl. You can purchase it for a one-time payment of 30 bucks on PayPal Venmo. And now I have the cash app. Follow the link in the description and be sure to include your email because it is a Google spreadsheet. That is how I share it with you. So please don't make me hunt down your email. Just don't do it. Anywho, it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel. Chicago Bears going with JT Tui Malau, edge at Ohio State. I like the swing on a guy who is who who's got the the length, the power, the explosiveness. Just none of the production, especially as a run defender, just doesn't have the production there yet. He's just not consistent. Uh, you need to reel him in, reel him back. I mean, this was a team that tried to go out and trade for Matt Judon. We're unable to. Uh, sure, you've seen good things from Austin Booker, but you can never have not enough edges, right? So to ensure that your pass rush, pass rush is just top tier, go ahead, snag another. Los Angeles Chargers go with Colston Loveland, tight end out of Michigan. This is the first tight end player, uh, tight end off the board. You get uh, Harbaugh reunited with one of his former players in Loveland, so you got to love it. Uh, is it... Feels so early for the tight end position. Uh, I feel like this tight end class is going to be similar to like uh, the Kincaid one where we'll probably see a tight end maybe come off the board late. And then a lot of them come off the board in day two. But it does feel like a good tight end class, potentially good tight end class. Uh, but I, I still kind of like the pick of like Kenneth Grant. I'm kind of a mark for the Chargers maybe taking Kenneth Grant. Another Harbaugh former player, so... They get a little they they get a little bit more meat in the middle there. Los Angeles Rams go with Luther Burden. By the way, didn't even realize Burden not even not even off the board yet. So wide receiver gets pushed all the way down the board. Perfect fit. A guy that can just create after the catch. He he gives you just insane elusiveness. I love his fit in a Sean McVay 
offense. And this just feels like you continue to get richer at the wide receiver position. Already having Puka Nakua, uh, Cooper Cup. Uh, we've seen good things from Tutu. We've seen uh, Marcus Robinson. That doesn't sound right. Is it Demarcus Robinson? That doesn't sound right. I know it's Demarcus. It is Demarcus Robinson. Okay. Egg on my face. Been around the league so long that uh, I question his name. Uh, but Jordan Winnington made the roster. You love that, but he's a guy that's dealt with injuries. I mean, at this point, the value is just too good. It's just too good. Pick 20. The Jets go with the own Walker. Nose out of Kentucky. Uh, get in that running mate next to Quinnen Williams. It's, it should be in the cards here. You just make a great defense even greater with, uh, I want to say, a versatile tool because Walker is kind of like that. He is. At that size, he moves extremely well. He's m more nimble than you would expect from a six foot six, 250 pounder. So. Uh, I mean, you got to think the Jets are another team in the quarterback market uh, just because you don't know what will go on with uh, Aaron Rodgers. He's up there in years. It, it is, will he be playing past this season? Who knows? At 21, the Miami Dolphins take Jonah Savanea out of Arizona. A lot of people project him as a guard. He's currently playing tackle, has played both guard and tackle. For the Wildcats, Dolphins need offensive line help regardless. I like this move on the interior. Uh, he, he's a hand-in-glove fit for a wide zone blocking scheme. The guy's got really good movement skills, so I like it. If you're going to get my Dolphins offensive line help, I'll take it. I'll take it. You got Abdul Carter going to the Falcons. This is hella fun. Hella, hella fun. Uh, they do need edge help, uh, unfortunately. Braylon Trice goes down with a knee injury. You got, uh, they, they did trade for Matthew Judon, but even outside of that, they could definitely bring in other guys. Arnold Epichetti hasn't exactly uh, worked out. Maybe that changes this year. That'd be awesome, but I like the addition of some edge help, uh, especially with a high upside guy like Carter, who's making the move to edge this season. At 23, Harold Perkins Jr., Going to the Texans. Ooh, that's fun. That's fun. You just get in now a, another super athletic uh, linebacker slash, slash edge. He's just a little small for the edge. 6'1", 220 pounds. A lot of people uh, want to like say, oh, he's like Micah Parsons light. And it's like Micah Parsons was also like 240. So a little bit of a difference there. I think he's probably going to have to stick it at off-ball linebacker just with that blitz and upside for a team in the Texans who actually don't blitz a great deal, unfortunately. So, uh, don't love, love the pick. Uh, I like the value, though. I'll say that. I like the value. Green Bay Packers take Patrick Payton. Not exactly coming off a good uh, week this past weekend. To be fair, I think this mock was done prior to Florida State's opening game uh, where he had... A pass rush percentage of or a win rate of zero percent be fair wasn't a lot of passing in the georgia tech offense and when they did it was masked with either the quick passing game or play action but still wasn't good showing for patrick payton a guy that who's got tools got length got uh explosiveness but you just need to see that consistency from him and unfortunately that just wasn't a good start for him on to pick 25, the Cincinnati Bengals take Emeka Abuka. Uh, I feel like they got a lot of wide receivers already. You might want to just address something else with this pick. Again, this is early. We don't know how these teams are going to look through the season and after free agency. I get it, T. Higgins. You're probably moving on from him unless they somehow get a deal done. They're absolutely going to get a deal done. With Jamar Chase, they do have uh, Andre Yoshivas. They do have Jermaine Burton. Probably probably just could go somewhere else with this pick, whether it's uh, you, could, you could make a case for a corner just because Dax Hill hasn't played there in the NFL. Uh, DJ Turner had up and down rookie year. You could talk about edge, interior. Like, there's a lot of other spots. 
Buffalo Bills, Donovan Jackson. They go with some guard help. And I think honestly, I wouldn't mind that like I wouldn't mind going wide receiver here. Uh you could also make a case for some help along the defensive line. Maybe a safety you really like in this class. There's a few other options. I don't think they really need another guard. Then again, we'll see how uh, Edwards plays this season. Maybe they do. Pick 27, Dallas Cowboys, Takario Davis. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Uh, get, in, get some more uh, corner help. Uh, you got Bland missing the first part of this season. Diggs missed all of last year. Uh, you want to just keep replenishing that, that cornerback room and grabbing kind of a freak in Davis who's got the length. Got good movement skills at 6'4 uh, to do that. He would be fun in a Zimmer off uh, defense. At pick 28, the Eagles go with Isaiah Bond. They did just acquire Jahan Dotson. They have been looking for that guy that could play, uh, not necessarily just in the slot, but added another piece of that wide receiving core. Ah, this just feels like too much at this point. I mean, I love Bond. This is definitely within his range. You get that speed. That vertical uh, ability, which, I mean, that, that kind of fits the Watkins role. But, again, they bring in Dotson. I wasn't sure. I'm actually not positive if this uh, draft, mock draft, was done prior to the Jahan Dotson trade. And I get it. Jahan Dotson might not be a long-term answer. He's still got, uh, I think he's going into the third year of his contract. So, they get him for, another, for this year and next year. But... Yeah, still, it just feels like too much. Pick 29, Tyler Booker going to the Ravens. Hot diggity dog. I mean, to be fair, the Ravens, you look at the their offensive interior, and th there are some questions. You're going to get Andrew Voorhees in uh, his first year after having to essentially redshirt last season. So that makes that makes sense. You maybe want to take a swing. Daniel Falele is going to be playing... Right guard, you got Molly. Uh, you got yeah, you got Molly who they liked last year, missed most of the year with injury. Ben Cleveland's still here, but he's probably gone after the season. Just hasn't worked out with him, which is a shame. I really really liked Ben Cleveland coming out. Maybe he could do better elsewhere. Uh, I mean Tyler Booker could end up playing tackle. Maybe this is your left tackle of the future because the dude's big, but he moves exceptionally well. Detroit Lions, they go with Landon Jackson. Landon Jackson is another guy that he needs. He, I mean, he needs consistency to his name. Uh, he had like one big game last year was against Bama, which, hey, that's a good game to break out in, but was kind of marginal, like mediocre during the other parts of the schedule. He does have an injury history. He feels more like a guy you take a shot on day two rather than the back end of the first round here. Though, Detroit does need some edge help. Pick 31, Kansas City Chiefs, Kenneth Grant. This is phenomenal. This is a great pickup. Love it. I lo lo love it. This is, this is exactly what you would want if you are the Kansas City Chiefs. If a big, meaty boy like him lasts, snag him, pairing him up next to Chris Jones, and that defensive line just continues to get scary. Scarier and scarier. And then with the final pick, we got the... Ooh, Niners go with Tommy Hill. Tommy Hill could be a big riser. I feel like they're pretty fine in the cornerback room. Uh, Tommy Hill uh, last season made the full switch from wide receiver to corner. Uh, I think like four games in the season. Looks pretty solid. There are definitely some areas he needs to work on. And you're hoping to see those improvements this season. Uh, a lot of people have tabbed him already as a top 100 a potentially prospect, especially if he just continues on his trajectory. He could even go much higher, maybe top 50. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, they, they brought in Green. I was a big fan of Renardo Green. Uh, we don't got a day two, do we? No, no day two picks here. Too early for that. But I know you want more draft content. I got you covered. I went over how some of the prospects fared in week zero of college football. So you can check out that video over here. Special thanks to BetUS. Thank you for powering today's video, and as always, until next time, be easy, my friends. Later.